The word rule is commonly associated with oppression and arrogant actions. I look at it as a way of governing to keep people's unnecessary ambitions under control. God let people run free. Hello everyone, this is Linkimus Prime and today we'll be taking a look at one of my favorite mobile suits from Gundam Wing, the Gundam Death Scythe. The XXXG-01D Gundam Death Scythe. This unit is one of the Gundams deployed during Operation Meteor and was developed by Professor G. It demonstrated excellent combat abilities due to its high stealth capabilities that was enabled by special paint, a hyperjammer, and high mobility. Its pilot is Duo Maxwell from the L2 Colony Group Sweeper Group. This mobile suit is equipped with a beam scythe and buster shield. A beam scythe in its stored state is included and it can be equipped on the hip. The blades on the buster shield can be unfolded and effect parts can also be attached. There are two included beam scythe effect pieces, one long and one short. For articulation, there is a ball joint in the head which allows it to look up this far and down this far. You can move the head side to side. If you move the head up, it'll allow you to rotate the head all the way around. There's a polycap butterfly joint in the shoulder which allows for more range. And you could turn the arm around full 360 degrees. There's a joint in the shoulder that allows the arm to move out, but it's only until you push in the thruster segment that you have more range. The elbow segment is double jointed. The wrist is on a ball joint and can move in many different directions. There's a ball joint in the waist which allows it to go all the way around. Because of this, the waist can tilt from side to side. And you can also tilt it forward and back. There's a new joint on the inside of the waist that accommodates for more dynamic posing. The hyperjammers are able to rotate on the backpack. The side skirts are able to rotate and move side to side. And the front skirting is able to move out and slightly side to side. The legs are able to move out and in. And when you flip back the back skirt, it accommodates for more range. So the leg can kick back and forward. There's also a sliding joint that helps the leg to kick farther. There's a swivel at the thigh joint that can go back pretty far. I don't recommend turning it all the way. There's a locking mechanism in the knee that can be released to expand the range of articulation. There's a ball joint at the base of the shin guard, and there's also a ball joint in the ankle, which allows for a very nice ankle pivot, and there's also a toe bend. And the foot could rock forward and back. Various poses can be pulled off, and you could also get him to kneel. A sheet of stickers are included, two for both head cameras, eyes, and one for the V-plate on the crotch. When it comes to the accessories, we have the buster shield. When it comes to attaching the beam effect piece, simply split open the two panels. The panels are on two segments, and they run on a gear, so they're able to open simultaneously with each other. You will now be able to fit the blast effect piece inside. There's a port on the shield which will allow you to tap it into the arm. For the scythe accessory, simply tab in one of the two beam effect pieces. Make sure that each side lines up. The blade segment is also able to move. There are two different hands that you can use to attach the beam scythe to. A regular fisted hand with a hole in it. 
and a hand that holds the scythe farther out. You can port the scythe into one of the two hands. I think this kit looks very cool when you add the accessories. For the other accessories, we have three sets of hands. We have two fisted hands with ports, two hands that hold the scythe out farther, and two open relaxed hands. Pan aligning is optional, and I've added it to only a few places. Mainly on the legs, fan sections in the chest, and on the head and back. I've resorted to painting the eyes instead of using the included sticker. For the details, I just used a regular Gundam pan aligning marker and a black Gundam marker for the background and the eyes as well as a metallic green for the actual eyes. Because this is a 1 1 scale kit, this does scale well with other 1 1 scales, such as other high grades and real grades. Overall, I think this is an absolutely amazing kit. I think Bandai really knocked it out of the park with this one. The build was simple, and the design isn't overly complicated, which I appreciate. I love the way the effect parts look, and I think it comes with a great array of accessories. The joints are nice and tight, not a lot of painting is required as well, which is an upside for people who are still new to the hobby. And it comes with the appropriate amount of stickers to add. This kit will look great with other 1144 scale high grade Gundam wing kits. And I'm also very excited for the new high grade Shenlong that's been revealed. The price of this kit does range around 12 to 15 bucks, so it is very affordable and cheap. Especially for a kit like this with a good amount of accessories and posability. Anyways guys, that is it for my review on the high grade Gundam Death Scythe. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, please check out some of my other reviews. I've linked a playlist to my Gunpla reviews in the description.